You've just touched on two points that, um, are, that we work on uh, quite uh, substantially as well, training and marketing. So just talking about the training aspect, what um, I know you encourage, and it's a prerequisite that your brokers um, work towards chartered status, uh, which, which I think is amazing. Um, what's your viewpoint on, on training for uh, client facing staff question one but also on owners of small brokers do you think there ought to be some kind of business development training for uh, people running small businesses okay interesting question so uh, i think back in 2014 if i remember um i i launched i was president of the cii uh, national and i launched the government growth action plan with matt hancock who's now the uh, health secretary he was then the education secretary uh, and we launched the uh, insurance growth action plan and that was to encourage apprentices within businesses so we've embraced that uh, we were one of the uh, original uh, i suppose pilots um, and, and we've taken on apprentices for the last seven years now so that's 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 really worked worked in our favor i think the answer lies in financial services sarah because Financial services have gone through things that I think are coming on the GI side, where unless you're qualified, you shouldn't be speaking to policyholders. So we've mandated, again, all our frontline troops, including claims, to have qualifications. And I think unless you're qualified, you shouldn't really be picking up the phone because every opportunity is to impart knowledge. And, and also you can cut costs by, I suppose, instead of asking 10 questions, ask three, get the right uh, answers and, and, and progress the, uh, the uh, solution for the end customer. So training is absolutely fundamental. Uh, I think companies that don't invest in training, well, as they say, try the alternative if you don't. Um, and, and, and then your second question is, is uh, what, what training is available? Uh, should, should organizations make themselves available? I think there is an awful lot that, that is available, uh, but ultimately it does require the individual to um, get off their backside and do their own learning. Um, I, I learn a lot myself. Um, I, I make it a mission every week uh, to stay ahead of my CPD. I, I read a hell of a lot. I, I stay engaged with, with what is going on. And I don't think there is any substitute for lifelong learning. Uh, it's something that I, I championed um, in, 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 my, in, my, in my life. Um, in fact, um, in 19, uh, I'm going to try and get the dates right now. In 1997, I was invited by the then um, Education Secretary, David Blunkett, to join the National Skills Task Force. And that was to look at the skills agenda for the UK PLC. Uh, and and I was I was part of that that group, and in 2001 we we launched the national skills agenda, and that was to upskill Britain, uh, to make sure that people had the opportunity. Because uh, my my personal belief um, is education is a universal currency. Uh, if you have something that people want, uh, you don't need to have anything else. You don't need gold. You need education. You can feed your family. And in many ways, lifelong learning has been very pivotal to, to my personal uh, career. And I think there is an awful lot of support mechanisms out there. The CII is one. There's a lot of business support groups who are out there as well. And there's an awful lot of free training. Um, but again, the individual has to make themselves available and be wanting to become a sponge and, and absorb what is going on. And if nothing else, these last 10 weeks, uh, when we are being uh, required to, to combine ourselves, uh, there's so much going on. I do hope people take an advantage of the time they've had to up upskill, uh, maybe to learn different skills, because employees out there must also understand that employers are going to be demanding more. Uh, and rather than being in a silo, what more can you off offer the employer? And we've also looked at employment contracts, Sarah, because we think an employment contract is both ways. You should be offering your skills to the employer and the employer should be valuing what skills you're adding to that organization. And if you're one dimensional, then I'm sorry to say you've, you've limited your options. So I think it's, uh, it's a phenomenal opportunity that's been provided to the individual. There's an awful lot of training out there. I get a gazillion emails every day updating me on, on what's going on in COVID-19. And I'm sure most brokers are as well. I'm, I'm, the question I have to ask is, are you, are you absorbing that, understanding it, applying that to your business uh, and helping your clients understand what's going on? Because, um, again, broking is, is great. Uh, as I said to you, um, which sector can say, I'm going to be speaking to Sarah on the 26th of May? 
You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely determinable. And when I go and see a client, I'll spend the first half an hour talking about the wider economy and um, what's going on. So I would regard broking as business doctors. We, we have a, a wealth of information that we should be sharing. Mm. Uh, and that proves value. So to me, lifelong learning has got to be something that brokers invest in, individuals should be investing in. As I say, the world of work is going to change. It's a contribution that you're making to your employer and that's got to be recognized. So please take advantage of all the training and ask the questions. Don't assume it's not available, ask the questions. And on that note, if anybody listening wants to look at the Boston Tullis website, we've got a series of coming training over the next few weeks that cover both soft and technical skills. Because I think there is, there's, a, there's a need for both because I think it builds confidence. So, you know, we do offer training. Did you mention that you guys offer training or did I make that up? No, we, we, have, we have individual brokers provide their own, own section of the mm. training. Uh, we have our learning and development uh, unit. Uh, we, we mandate all, all our guys to be undertaking continuous improvements. Mm. Uh, they have their personal development plans uh, signed yeah. off every single year. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, you know, my, my, my team would come to you, Sarah, saying, what is it you've achieved last 12 months? Where do you want to go? What can we do to assist in your skills? And can we enhance your, your learning? And I think if you came to me with a blank sheet of paper or two or three lines, I'd be very disappointed. Uh, we, we need you to challenge us. Uh, I'm prepared to invest in individuals. Um, but of course, that's going to be done within working hours. But we'd like to see what you're prepared to do outside working hours. And that encourages me to um, uh, invest in you. Uh, again, something we're very proud of, investors in people. Uh, most of our brokers are investors in people recognized as well. I think we're on silver in my trading business uh, with a view to go to gold. And I think that should, again, be recognized by employers and individuals because again, invest in your own future. Um, pension age is going to be increasing. I think it's 68 now. Uh, I think with respect, looking at, uh, at, at yourself, Sarah, it might go up to 75 by the time you get to retirement age. And I think, you know, you, you, you're a long time gone and, and, and you can work for a very, very long time to look after mm -hmm. yourself and your family. Why would you give that up? 